This tutorial is part of a YouTube playlist. You can access this and many more of the tutorials in this course. If you do like this YouTube playlist and you want to access the whole course, you can do on Udemy. The link to the YouTube playlist and YouTube course is in the video description. Right, so we saw an example earlier when we created the Hello app. We're gonna need some sort of entry point into our application. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we're going to design and build that. Now I have a clear project folder structure. I just need to ask myself, where is that best placed? Now, I think that's best placed within the FPA Commerce folder because it's related directly to the project in terms of the project that we're developing. So let's go ahead and within the FK Commerce, let's create a new folder. Now notice that I did right click on the FK Commerce folder. It's a little bit complicated when it looks like that. What we have here is free folders, but there's nothing inside of those folders. So Visual Studio Code just shows you the three folders. So I've right clicked on FK Commerce to create a new file. Sometimes it doesn't always create in that folder, so we need to move it around and it gets complicated to understand first of all. But once we add some new files into these directories, it's going to make it clear exactly where these files are. But just be careful to make sure that the files are in the correct place. When you start running the application, there might be a few errors and that could be a potential problem and solution, of course. So right, inside of here, let's go ahead and build our app file, app.py. This is going to be our entry point into the application. So the application is going to reside in the core folder. So we're going to bring in a resource from core, which doesn't exist yet. So this is going to be create app. This is going to allow us to create a new instance of our app. Okay, now this is a, an interesting point. So previously we set up in our project settings here, um, we set up source fixel explicit. So that allowed the extension rough to have a look at our code, inspect our code, and maybe remove anything or change anything to fix any errors it can see. Now, at the moment, because this resource doesn't exist, it's underlined, we're told here it's imported but unused. It doesn't exist just yet. So when we do press save, it will be removed, which is highly annoying. So we have to maybe just remind ourselves not to save at this point. Otherwise, if I press save now, you can see it will just get removed. Now that isn't a big problem because if I go to file, I do have auto save turned on anyway. So I don't actually need to press save at any point. So that should save regardless. And then what I need to do now is define app equals create app. So I apologize for keep repeating, but from core import create app, this line imports the create app function from the core module. Now the create app function is going to be a factory function responsible for creating and configuring the Flask application instance. Now what we're starting to do here, although it might not make sense at this point, this is going to provide greater flexibility using this approach that we're using and modularity. So as different configurations or setups um, are configured for our application, as we think about, oh, okay, we're gonna need a setup for development. We're gonna see, need a setup for when we deploy the application. So this approach that we're using, this factory approach, is going to provide that greater flexibility for this modularity so that we can actually configure different configurations in the long run. We are also in some way promoting separation of concerns by keeping the application and the setup logic isolated from the rest of the code base. Now at this point, you're probably thinking, what the hell are you talking about? Because we've just written two lines of code essentially here. So let's now move into the core and have a look at how this is being imported in. So where is it actually being imported in from? Right, so we're importing a create app from core, which is a reference to this folder here at the moment. So at the moment, we've not necessarily specifying any resource. So in actual fact, what we're gonna do is we're going to create a new file. This is gonna be a underscore underscore, so two underscores, i and i underscore underscore dot pi. So the initialization file. Simply put, what we're doing here is we're saying from core, from this folder core, import this resource. Now, we're just referring to a folder at the moment. So what we've done is we've created an initialization file. So if we specify this folder in our import, in actual fact, this file is going to be run by default. So in this case, we specify core, so from core import create app. 
So I say loosely, we navigate to the core folder. When this core folder is initiated like this through this import statement, then this file will automatically run. So what we can now do is specify some code within here to automatically run when we import it. Now we are trying to import the create app function. So let's go ahead and build it. So function, uh, create app, and there we go. So that's pretty much all we need there. So we're gonna need to start a new app. So this is similar code uh, to what we first created when we created the simple hello app. So we're going to initiate or create a Flask application. Okay. And then what we want to do is we want to actually return app to make an instance of our Flask application. So we're simply just calling um, create app, which is going to create an instance of our application. And that's then going to run our application. So we will need a few resources here. So from like we did in the simple app we created. Let's go ahead and import Flask. I won't explain that again. I think I explained it uh, previously, what this from Flask import Flask is all about. So there we go. So that is similar code that we created for our Hello um, app. That's gonna create an instance of Flask. Okay, so let's uh, close this down and see if we can get this to work. Right, so I'm gonna type in ls to see where I am currently. Now in the terminal here, you can see that the terminal is placed within inside of this scripts folder because I navigated to it previously. So what I need to do here is change the directory. I need to go up a directory. So I'm currently inside this scripts folder. I need to go up one to come back into this root directory. So cd dot dot slash, that's going to take me back up a directory. So you can now see when I type in ls, I'm showing all the root directory folders and files. So now what I need to do is I need to change directory. I don't have to, but I'm going to work this way into FK Commerce. So now I'm in my project folder. Okay, that's where the app file is. So now I can go ahead potentially and run the app file. So let's give it a go. Right, so let's run Flask. And then this time app, uh, uh, app run. Okay, and there we go. It looks like our Flask application is running. So we have just performed the same task like we did with the simple application, the hello function that we created previously. But this time we've just structured the project in a slightly different way. Now where it can get a little bit confusing with the examples in general online or in books is that generally the name app is used to create a, a new instance of our Flask application. And it can get confusing because there's a name here, this file name is called app here. And then we have this app equals, and then when we create a new Flask instance, it's app as well, and we're returning app. So everywhere's app. So we're wondering what the hell is going on. So let me just close the server. Let's go ahead and run, instead of using the word app here, I'm just going to just run Flask run. Notice that works absolutely fine. So by default, as long as we're running the command in the directory where the app file is, I'll use ls there, so we currently reside in the directory where the app file resides. As long as that exists there and we run the flask run command, by default, flask will look for a file called app. Okay, so if we were to rename this now to appx and then run flask run again, notice that it doesn't find it. Okay, so it's looking specifically for WSGI server or an app file called app. Okay, so that's important. So the whole point of specifying in this case, we come on. So the whole point of specifying app here with the app flag is to specify the file. So we don't need to call this app. You can call it whatever you like ultimately. So let's just change it to app X. So we just need to tell Flask that run app X. It does exactly the same thing. Similar to our app file here, we can call this whatever we like. So let's call this app XXX. So maybe not appropriate. Um, let's call it app APPP. So let's go ahead and just make sure that that works. So that shouldn't be a problem at all. Flask should still be able to find the instance of Flask and run. There we go. So we're still running the server with that setting. Now exactly the same thing here. We can 
we can use whatever we like. As long as we're returning the instance of our Flask application, that should be absolutely fine. And there we go. So do have a play around. It is a general convention, particularly in examples to utilize app. But of course, you're free to use whatever you like. It's probably a good idea to document this. Um, if you do make any changes and you are working in Teams, etc. Um, if you're working as an individual developer, of course, you may just remember that is your convention, your way of working. So I'm going to replace and remove all the changes that I've made. So we're just going to return that back to app. We are going to be utilizing app within this project, the name app. So we we'll just double check to make that all works. Make sure that all works. No, that's the wrong one. There we go. OK, so there we have the start of our application, the entry point within our application. Now, if that isn't making sense to you right now, there's two reasons why. One, because I'm not very good at explaining things. Or two, maybe you're just new to Python and this is very abstract. You know, you would need a, an understanding of object oriented programming really to understand this fully because we are working with classes. Um, so on the surface level, all we need to do is create an instance of Flask. OK, so that's what we've done there. We've returned it back to where we're calling it. And then Flask is going to find that instance and then run a server and run our application.